This episode is brought to you by 20 Past 4, your one-stop vaping head shop. They get new stuff weekly. Stop in and check them out. Four locations, two in Great Falls, one in Helena, one in Billings, and Guerrilla Warfare Apparel. The best gear in the fight world. Join the Guerrilla Gang in 2023 because we are taking over. Be sure to use our code TWB10 for 10% off at checkout. That's TWB10 at checkout. And Jamie St. Mark's. Who's ready for the weekly bust? You're in the right place if you came to catch the show. Tithe and Levi are the names of your host. Who the next guest is, I really wanna know. Conversation escalate, let's get to the show. Who's ready for the weekly bust? Going. Coming to you live. Season four, episode eight. We have Chevy the Wildman Bridges. Welcoming on the weekly boss. What's up, bro? What's going on, guys? How are you? Oh, doing we're well, doing well, man. Nice to shit, but we're getting there. Yeah, running behind, but that's okay. You know, we're on time in uh in the the other frequency world, man. On the other side, we're on time, baby. Right. <laughs> that's right. If you're busy, if you're busy, that means you're successful and you're doing things right. So. Amen to that, man. I'd rather right. be a busy man than a bored man. Oh. Amen. Give me a second. First sip. How we doing? <laughs> first, first sip of the day. Or how is that? Going? Oh, I can I can barely hear you guys. One second. Say that for me again. First sip there for you. How's the coffee tasting? Oh, perfect, perfect. It's about <laughs> probably my seventh or eighth cup of the day, but it's. it's, good. it's <laughs> I say he's like. First. He 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 measures in cups instead of pots. <laughs> he's like, I this could be my second pot, third pot. Yeah, he's like, it's my twenty fourth cup of coffee. Well, I, also <laughs> go, I go by uh, Dunkin' Donuts quite a few times throughout the day as well. So, God damn, that's got to be expensive, man. No, it's not too bad. When you go there as many times as I do, they they make it he easy. Got loyalty they? points, you know. <laughs> got some loyalty points. Oh yeah, he's an mm-hmm. only, he's uh, OnlyFans dude. Got that got the there a little bit. There we go. Yes, sir. Uh, so we, we have a typical, um, we have a thing on the show where, uh, we're for new, new guests or people that aren't familiar with the guest, we're going to let you give the opportunity in your own words to give your own self description of who the fuck Chevy Bridges is the wild man, man, pretty much like the name says, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not like real crazy loud, wild by any means, but, uh, you never know what you're going to get with me. Uh, I'm a wing it kind of guy, kind of a fuck it in the moment. So I'm fun. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Oklahoma, in, in southeastern Oklahoma. So kind of out in the country, out in the in the sticks. Okay. Uh, what was life like? Uh, was it? Uh, were you well raised? Were uh, life's hard? Like poverty life? What, were you, what, what was well, up? Um, definitely, definitely poverty. You know, uh, in my area, and uh, not not the easiest life by any means. Um, not definitely, probably not the hardest. And you know, everybody's life is different, sure, of course. Sure. But uh, you know, uh, to me, it, it was pretty rough. Went through a lot of shit, you know, but uh, it crafted me into the fighter and the man that I am now. You know, I can handle a lot of shit. And you seem to, like you, the- you got, you got some cauliflower ear. You've been in the fight world some time, man. You don't get, you don't get that fucking around. You know, playing games in the backyard. You, you, you earn that shit. Yeah, I, uh, I did a MMA for a while. Um, I have a five and three professional record in MMA. Uh, did two amateur fights. I was two and zero, oh, and then I wrestled in high school for a little while. How'd you do in high school? Uh, wrestling. Oh, I was horrible. You were horrible? Levi did some wrestling. Horrible. I was like, horrible. horrible. Levi, says, he, Levi also will say he's horrible, too. <laughs> My first year was really uh, bad. What? I wasn't the best at it in high school. I didn't uh, take it like high school no. wrestling too serious. I was doing it for fighting. So my uh, my fight wrestling was pretty good. But my high school wrestling, like I said, it wasn't very good. So. So I was wondering, in Oklahoma, I feel like I think of, and a lot of people think, uh, like Midwest, were your parents, did you have anything to do with, like, farming and stuff down there? What kind of stuff did you guys do over, like, your parents and stuff like that? Oh, man. Uh, well, not too much with my parents, so to speak. But uh, when I was younger, I, I did, you know, stay with my dad out on a on a ranch for a while. He was a ranch hand, so, you know, he learned, he taught me how to, you know, drive a tractor and Bell hay, and you know we were tossing square bells, you know, uh, saddling the horses, feeding horses, taking care. Sounds of Sounds like Montana. <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know. But it, it's kind of, uh, kind of like Yellowstone, but not as fancy. Fuck no! If you're watching the show, it ain't nothing like that up here, bro. 
<laughs> I was just wondering. I worked with some custom cutters out of Oklahoma at a friend's farm for a little bit, so I was just kind of wondering what you guys did over there and whatnot. Yeah, yeah I mean, we definitely. I learned something new about Jake every time he comes on. Oh, I know, seriously though, <laughs> you know, interesting guy here, man. We definitely have you know the regular cities that are uh, normal cities like anywhere else, like Oklahoma City and Tulsa. But where I'm from, it's more country. Okay. So, uh, where are you? Like part, like are you central Oklahoma? Are you closer to Tulsa? Where are you? Um, no, I'm I'm down towards the bottom of the state where it connects to Texas in the southeastern part. So you're hot as shit. Um, not right now. It's pretty cold there, from what I've been seeing What's on social. What's your cold media. though? What's your degrees? Oh uh, well, this year it got down to single digits, to about six degrees. But I think right now it's just like a little really? bit of freezing and snowing. Crazy. Uh, do you have not mountains where you're from, or is it kind of just all flat? No, no, it's flat. Unless it's a man-made little hill or mountain, it's flat. Yeah, yeah. You sense. get on a step stool, see the whole state. <laughs> So uh, let's get into some of your history here. Like on, uh, with the BKFC, uh, it looks like your last fight was a uh, 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 last year at uh, KM two. Yep. Uh, what was uh, what was the reasoning behind your disappearance and your hiatus in the fight culture? Um, I had a I had a hand injury from that fight. You know, uh, had a had a lot of learning moments in that fight, so I had to recover from that. And uh, I I thought I was almost recovered for the uh, Albuquerque card last time in August. And I actually re-injured that hand and uh, not too bad. But the doctor that I was seeing uh, wrote, you know, highly suggested I not I not fight check, give it a little bit longer. So I did that and uh, went through the proper steps to make sure I heal correctly for the longevity of bare knuckle and make sure I give the fans and, you know, my team and my supporters and myself the best that I can instead of just, you know, running my body through hell and making it a quick ride. So sure. Okay. Smarter, not harder. Are you coming back with a vengeance? You feel like your your training's gonna uh, like uh, show us? Uh, you're, are you gonna showcase yourself, or do you feel like you're gonna you're gonna um, shake off some rust? I believe so. No, I don't. I don't think I'll have much rust. I mean, I've I've been in the gym. I've stayed in the in the zone. I've been watching. I've been you know mentally soaking in. I feel like I've grown more in my time off. Have some more time to reflect. Not feel the pressure of trying to learn something or do something faster uh, because of a fight. So I feel. I feel better. You know, I feel like I'm in the beginning stages of my prime. I'm this training camp has been the best one I've had. It's, uh, you know, I've done things I've never done in this for this training camp and I've, I've had wonderful progress. Um, I'm feeling great. I feel strong. Everything's just clicking just right. So, I mean, regardless of what happens Friday night, I know I'm going to be the best version of myself that shows up better than anybody's ever seen. And I know that Kevin's going to bring the game and bring the best version of himself. So, it's going to be a hell of a fight, and I, I just have anything can't to say it. about your opponent. Um, nothing too specific. Specifically, I don't know too much of him personally. Uh, we've had some crossings here and there when we both lived out here, but nothing too crazy or or too, uh, I guess, too involved to you know staple each other in, in each other's minds, so to speak. Um, I like. Have you, have you guys sparred or anything like that? Have you guys done any training? Um, no, nothing too, nothing too crazy. We might have done a couple rounds, but nothing that I can really remember. Okay. I doubt he remembers. Um, he's been dismissive of me, dismissive of me, lately, saying that uh, you know, things like he didn't. He told someone that he didn't know that I called him out, which I think is hilarious because he actually responded to it. So it's funny that you responded to something that you didn't see. Where was that at? Was that uh, it was on Instagram after his last fight? Yeah, I made a post and I, I, you know, pretty much called him out because I liked his shirt. I liked his little joke he was doing. But at the same time, like this, I feel this is my division. I feel BKFC is my home. I, I love it here. And you that's know, funny you uh, said that. So, who, who is your uh, who's your opponent? What was their name again? Uh, Kevin Kroon. Kevin. Okay, Kroon. that's right. I I remember. Yeah. So you know, he he had a cool little walkout shirt that said, you know, uh, I snatch kisses and vice versa. So, you know, I made a little comment and said, that's cool, or something, you know, along the lines of, you snatch kisses, but I snatch souls. And so, you know, he kind of commented <laughs> back, you know, I think the joke went over your head. And I said, you know, I, I, I didn't go over my head. I just didn't find it funny. Um, something about come find you a real fighter. And he just said, you know, cool story, bro. Like, kind of dismissed me like I was just, yeah. you know, the unpopular kid at school kind of deal. And then an interviewer asked him and said, you know, Chevy called you out. Did you happen to see that or anything? And he just straight up said, oh, no, I didn't even know. You know, so I think it's funny that he's kind of trying to play the dismissive game. Like I'm like I'm just somebody that's not important. And, you know, I was going to ask, you know, during your hiatus, because you said you, you, you're considering BKFC your home now. This is home base. 
and that you you're going to rock your division, right? Um, during your uh, hiatus, did you sit back and watch and see how the the sport was developing, and what were your thoughts on the the, the current division that you that oh, you're jumping in back in? Absolutely, I think there's a lot of great challenges as a man and as a fighter in this division. You know, uh, a lot of talent, a lot of a uh, lot of grit, a lot of toughness. So I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a a fun journey in the 55 division. And I'm excited to see what happens. And, you know, like I said, the the only, you know, the, the best thing that I'm guaranteeing for everybody is uh, I'm going to make sure I do my best to show up and, and give the best bare knuckle fights that the fans want to see. You know, the the nasty, the I'm here to fight. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to get away. Like, it's it's going to be exciting. So Awesome. So yeah, that's not nice hear, I hear pressure coming on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If the wild man's on the card, just know it's a fight. It's always going to be a fight. It's not going to be a. Hey, if you signed on, if you signed on, you're ready for it, right? So let's get it on. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm for those that didn't know, he's going to be fighting at Knucklemania Three. We'll be live, baby. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll be down first, there. Uh, first male fighter to be featured on Knucklemania twice in a row, and I'm, you know, I'm not a that's champion. That's an accomplishment. Like, hey, fuck, dude, that's cool. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I believe in my in my mind, that's making history. You know, it's the biggest history. part of their promotion. So, let's that's make it happen, sick, bro. So I know it sucks kind of coming back from an injury, but is it nice kind of knowing that you've had this last year to kind of not just come back physically, but mentally you kind of had time to, Yeah, I don't want to say like lay back, you know what I mean? But, but you to had oh, no, absolutely. Because, you know, when I first got into it, I went to the tryouts on four days notice. I went to, uh, waited a couple months training, thinking I was getting ready. You know, what I thought at the time was getting ready for, for a bare knuckle fight. And then a buddy that I met at the tryouts had a fight. He pulled out for an injury. So within an hour, I contacted my new manager and said, hey, throw me in the mix. It was 12 days from the fight. He told me, you know, congratulations, you got the fight. We did it. It was a rush. It was fast. You know, it was a knockout real quick. Roll around four months later after, you know, coming off that high of a, a knockout win and a big promotion like that off a of whim. Had the, you know, the fight I did with Edgar that I lost in a uh, Nocomania 2, you know, the little yeah. back and forth battle, you know, the injury. So it allowed me. And in, and in between those fights, I was going to all these other events, just getting invited to go and going yeah. just to, to put my face out there and, and solidify who I am in the crowd and with the promotion, with the people. Kind of build it it up. was a lot, man. I'm a small town guy. Like uh, I'm used to fighting on lot. local shows. I'm used to poverty. Like it was just a lot. We don't travel a lot. So that layoff, I feel that. To sit back and soak it all in. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Uh, there, that, that brings up two great points. I want to, um, so you, you talked about Nelkomania a few times in there and there was a point where you said you, you and your cousin would just sit there and manifest the idea of going to Nelkomania and being part of that. That came true. Are you still using the law of attraction and manifestation? Um, in a way, not in the magical sense that people use, but in the sense of we set our goals, we see what we want. We see what we've accomplished so far with what we've done. And we just keep turning it up. We just we keep oh, working yeah. hard. Are they a fighter? Your who, cousin? Who's your cousin? Uh, my cousin is my head coach. Oh, gotcha. there you that's go. T- okay. TJ Pierce. Yes, yeah. She's competed in uh, grappling tournaments and trained for about as long as I have. So okay, cool. Yeah. Um, also, you said that you know you're just sitting back soaking shit in, and you're just kind of mind blown, and you're also like you're, you're very humble about the experiences that you're you're receiving. Um, with that being said, that you you said that there was a point in time where you were like, uh, you looked out at your fucking phone and you were just mind blown by the contacts that you fucking that you've made along the way. Is oh, absolutely. It feeling that I mean, way, or is it kind of resonating? That's kind of your place now. I mean, a little more, but you know, it's still that part is still kind of soaking in because I'm still meeting new people that I've I've seen on TV for so Hell long. Yeah. Now that I'm soaking in the fact that I'm fighting for the you know the biggest promotion of bare knuckle, I'm on TV myself now it's getting easier to understand that they're more normal than what people from small towns like myself see on TV. Like, Holy cow. Like that dude is top of the world famous, you know, like starstruck. So it's getting easier to see that, you know, they're fighters like me doing the same thing I'm doing. They've been there. They've done that. They're just where they're at now. So like, it's a more of a goal. Like I'm going to be there one day. Like that's going to be me that somebody's just getting into the game is going to be like, Holy cow. There's that dude right there. Like, wow, that's crazy. You know, coming from small town, I get that um, because it's starting to happen with us as well. Yeah. So I'm behind that. I say we're right there with you because, you know, I mean, we're from Montana. So I mean, right. And I come from such a small town. It's like it's crazy. Like 
I go to the Walmart that I grew up in my whole life. And, you know, sometimes people are like, man, that's cool. When are you fighting again? I watched your last one. That's really cool. And, you know, it just blows my mind. It's like, man, I've been coming here since I was a little kid. Like, I've probably seen you a million times in this store. Yeah. No shit. And now it's like, right, like I get I'm my regular like, groceries. It's, it's kind of cool. Like, people <laughs> think it's inspiring from my town, which I'm glad that I am inspiring people from my town to chase your dreams and do it. Like, don't be stuck here. Well, you can do something. That's rather, right. No matter what it is. So, so it, it is cool. It's awesome. Right. So I got one. So speaking of opening your phone, what kind of porn do you like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Shit. Well, I like, uh, I like just the girls alone. I like I don't like nothing to do with that that weird man shit. That's gross. I'm not trying to see that. Fair. Um, or uh, I'm not afraid to really admit it, but uh, pregnant women are sexy. There you go, yeah. man. Hey. We don't king shame on the show, bro. We ain't Hell about no. that life. Oh, I don't care. Pre My pregnant, buddy sucks. pregnant bellies are just fun, something. Fun. Just yeah, nice his buddy's better. a feet guy for real, for real, dude. We've had a dominatrix on the show, man. She showed us how vanilla we really were, dude. Yeah. <laughs> She's all like, hey, you listen. guys are pussies, dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> he's he's, 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 he's an OnlyFans sponsored athlete. So. Yeah. <laughs> Who, where's your favorite spank bank to go to? Who's your favorite OnlyFans? <laughs> oh, I don't do. I don't subscribe to any pages like that. I'm not. There you go. All right. right. I'm gonna ask with the hat if you got a free. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not paying a subscription to see that. If I can't get it on my own, then I guess I don't need to see it really. Unless it's you know, on the internet for free. Yeah, I got. Wow, I got the internet, bro. Like, all right. You, you, right? you seem like your house is uh, empty right now, but you never alone, no, right? Because you got right here. My best friend's over here. He he traveled all the way this way for with me. Hey, yeah, buddy, how you doing? Doing? Uh, I don't know where she went. She made it. Bust. Also, you have a you have a right. in house guest right. all the time. Oh, there there is. another one. Hell yeah! yeah. So, Who's your in house guest that never leaves? Uh, probably my son. But uh, I mean, no, 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 no. no. Uh, I'm talking like. You haven't like a, a, a oh, you're talking story. about Benny? Are you mean? Yeah. You mean Benny? <laughs> yeah. So Benny, well, that was a. I don't live in that house anymore, but uh, I had some roommates that I believe they ran Benny off, like I mentioned before. But you no, know, I lived with Benny for about two years, and I'm sure if he wouldn't have got run off, I'm sure he'd be here with me now because I'd have I'd have found something to bring him with me because Benny was cool. He's the well, only ghost I ever got along with. What was some things that was going on yeah, in that house? Right, yeah. Um, nothing too creepy, man. He was. I, I don't want to sound, you know, I don't know how to word it the correct way. I don't want to offend nobody, but I'd like to think it was like a younger adult, like teenager or child, because man, it was like playful shit. Like at night when you're trying to sleep or watch TV, you would hear running across the attic just at certain times. Like when you're trying to be really focused, it'd be random or you let, you put something down. That's just somebody from and then you go to bed and it's gone. And then you go to look for it again. And it's just like laid somewhere else in the most random off the wall spot or underneath something like just funny little game stuff. Oh, okay. So, so like, it was just cool. It was just juvenile cool. Stuff. Just, no, nothing bad. Yeah. Juvenile stuff. Bad it was like little games. So if, if Benny's out there watching oh, somewhere, man, come back. Up? please. Uh, oh, those shit. people are gone. They're not going to run you off. You're more than welcome to come hang out again. Hey, so I've been uh, noticing in the background, what is with that joke? Uh, that yeah. painting? You got like a native uh, painting, yeah. Yeah, painting uh, by oh, the stairs. Dude, it's, in the, it's in the Airbnb, so. Oh, it's that's fucking it's sick, fucking dude. Right, it's uh, my cousin, she's uh, she's Native American. Yes, in Albuquerque, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, was, I was looking uh, at Airbnbs and we fucked up. Explaining yeah, the up. imagery <laughs> behind it, I guess, is in Native American culture, in some tribes, you're not uh, supposed to look. Eye contact with people. You got the fucking spot. You might again. you might catch the weekly bus boys up in your spot hanging. Hey, come on down. Come on down. <laughs> we'll be there Wednesday. But, uh, so. Yeah. so it's supposed to symbolize him transferring his energy and stuff with the bird. It's I fucking guess, sick, dude. Yeah, yeah, we were like, dude, is that his house? That fucking place is sick. Oh, I wish. I wish. There's paintings all over the place, man. It's it's that? everywhere. It's nice. It's a nice little place. The staircase is just right in the middle. You can walk a whole circle around it. It's pretty cool. We've even got table tennis in the backyard. It's great. We've been playing table tennis like a motherfucker. Let's go. go. Table tennis or beer pong? Table tennis. I don't drink. So, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. so um, I, I know that you're an advocate for addicts and shit because you said you came up hard, right? And that you've had yeah. a long line of addicts in your life. Um, are you doing anything currently to uh, in your community uh, to help out addicts, or do you have a charity, or do you have anything um, you're helping? Not yet. I've been trying to get with a couple different types of charities. That is something I would like to. So if there's somehow that this gets out to somebody or someone's watching or anybody has any idea how to, that would be great. I would love to do something 
for something, you know, for a group of people like that to help better themselves. But I'm also trying to get with charities with wildlife and like, you know, um, endangered species and stuff like that, because of course I am the wild man. So, and I love animals. So anything to do with either one of those two, I would love to be a part of, and, you know, yeah, help bring, sick, and use my platform to bring it bigger and bring more eyes to it because bring it together, man, bring the animals and the addiction shit together, bro. And do something crazy. Absolutely. I mean, there are people like me that grew up in that life and was completely surrounded by it, but did not have the willpower That's or true. the, the outlets that I had to escape from that and make sure I didn't follow that track, you know, because I'm, I'm probably besides my grandpa who was related by marriage, I'm probably the only one, in my blood immediate family that's never touched, you know, hard drugs like that, you know, Good on you, bro. The, you know, meth and stuff like that. So, but there are people out there that don't have that choice because they're just surrounded and eventually they just give up. So I would love to help people like that. If I could, you know, show them an outlet, you know, you can have light is a fucking meaning. Life. Fans, like if you're out there watching and you need help, subscribe to it message me. Let's we can go. Do I like boxing. that, man. I really, we support talk, that type like, of behavior. Somebody to talk to that's been through it. Someone that will listen that understands what you're going through, hit me up. We'll make it happen. That's badass. Congrats, man. I'm uh, October made five years of alcohol free for me. So Let's go. Oh wow, wow. Yes, congratulations. That's sick, dude. How long you how long you been alcohol free? Oh no, I I've never really been drinking. Like um, I lost uh, one of my favorite uncles when I was real young. I didn't get to make it in time to say goodbye. He uh he died of liver cancer because he loved to drink. So that's always been a big deal. And I've never really been Big on getting drunk, paying somebody to make me sick the next day. It doesn't taste good. It makes me want to gag when I drink it. I do I occasionally a, have a beer or two with dinner or something, but that's about it. I don't ever get drunk. Uh, I I um, fucking, you are um, um, a man that seems to be known for doing crazy hairstyles and shit. It looks like you've remained mellow. Are you keeping it under the hat or... You know, what do you oh, got going on? It's still normal right now. It's still normal. I'm waiting until it gets closer so it's nice and fresh. You know, uh, okay. I do have something in store. Um, I like to I like to keep my fans interactive. You know, I let them try to vote the colors, the songs the best I can to the ones that are most interactive with it. So I've got a I've got a, a fan out there in the world. I'm not going to give it away, but uh, they've been consistently asking for a certain certain shade. So I'm going to do this one. I'm not going to announce it. It's going to be a surprise to them because I know that they're going to be watching. They've followed every step of the way, even during my injury. So this one's going to be for them. And once he, once they see it, they're going to know. Right on, dude. That's fucking sick. There you go. Got to keep your day ones happy. Um, So I don't mean to cut you short, but we have a, we have a follow-up episode right after you. Um, We, I want to give a moment for you to shine out your sponsors, shout out your merch deal, fucking all, all of that jazz. So we don't um, forget but it. Real quick, how did where did the wild man come from? Um, it's a it's a homage for my grandpa, the one I talked about by marriage. You know, like I said, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's my, gran- my nanny, I called her, but my grandma, you know, we're southern. But my nanny, she passed when I was like probably two, maybe three years old, and maybe four. Real young though, and he just stayed in our lives and took care of us. You know, and made sure I had food every day when my family wasn't there for me, and you know, doing their drugs, and so. Uh, for a long time, he didn't believe in my fighting. He thought it was kind of like uh, childish, you know, not a real job. Uh, decrepit, as he calls it. Um, but one day I convinced him to come to one of my MMA fights, and he just he fell in love. Just automatically started watching Bellator every week when it was on Spike. Loved it. And he, uh, he asked me that after my fights, when I win by finish, to bang on my chest like a wild man in the jungle. So that's why I do it. I do it for him. So oh, I changed man. my wild man, and I bang on my chest. I was wondering, I cause you're like, I'm not like a, you're like, I'm not a wild, crazy man out in the world. So I was like, well, and weird. No, not too bad. I can be, but I try to be, you know, respectful, humble. I try to be civilized. You know, we are people. We do have morals. There are ways to treat people, but there are moments to be a little wild and have some fun. Hell yeah. As- assuming that, uh, that everything goes well in Knucklemania, you said a Mike and Mission show that, um, that you're down to bang it out with anyone. Do you have anyone in particular mind after that? Man, anybody. Um, I know James Lilly is uh, fighting your next guest uh, for the title eliminator fight. So however the fuck that goes, he called me out. He said he thinks it'd be a violent fight. I think it would be too. You so James here, Lilly, if you, you want the here. next, let's get it. Um, but anybody else in the division, really. I know me and Tony have had some back and forth. He's on a different path. I seem to be on a different one. But really, whoever the fuck wants it, 
tow that fucking line and I'll make sure I'm there. I don't there give a fuck go. what happens. We'll I'm pass the word to James. Send, send the contract. He'll we'll sign pass it. the word to James. Yeah, right? hey. He's coming on here in this following few days. Uh, like, like Connor Price says in uh, his uh, his little songs, you know, uh, email full of contracts. I signed with a stylist. So send that motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Hey, there you go. Connor Price. Uh, fucking make sure you give your sponsor some shine, my man. They deserve oh, it. Man, I've got Knockout Canada. They just sent me a new fresh line of gear. Like they they customize a brand new style of shorts for me that I asked for specifically. Knockout Canada. New hoodies, like new material. I've got their sweats on right now. If you guys can see that. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just nice. I've got, you know, combat ready. They made my special merch line right here for me. I've got only fans right here taking care of me, make sure, you know, I can get my message out there and help people and just do fitness stuff. Um, you got all the right people you know, believing in you, man. A lot, man. Yes. And I've got a local team out here in Albuquerque, uh, Black Eagle Security. They reached out to me for this fight and offered a really great deal to uh, to help me while I'm out here as well. Um, That's what's up. I've got Red River uh, Tea Company out in locally in Durant. It's a local T-shirt. Uh, uh, I don't know how, what's the word for that. Merchant creator. Yeah. Um, she makes really great T-shirts. Uh, tie dye, like bleach dye. Funny quotes, just punny stuff. You know. Um, I've got, man, I've got a ton. I've got more than I've ever had. So let me get my shorts because I've got them all right there. <laughs> Perfect, I got man. Cheap. I was like, my shorts, we used though, to be cause... assholes and we'd always talk when people were talking about sponsors. So I'm glad you're doing this. Right. Man, I've got yeah, no, retro gaming. It's also locally. They make uh, they can get like any kind of like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis and Nintendo 64 Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. They restore them, clean them, bring them back to life. Get any game you want. They're they're fucking awesome, man. Like I've got a few retro, retro systems I'm about to get when I get home that I just absolutely cannot wait. So if you're into those old style games. Right, right. Did you say that's called retro gaming? My boy Jason. Retro gaming DNA. Yep. Retro it's gaming. It's nice. Yeah. You can find them on my Facebook. They're really great. Awesome. Um, I've also got 903 Texas made bullies. Um, they they sell uh micro exotic bullies. Um, I believe bully out of Miami. No. Uh no, no, they're in Texas. Texas. Oh, Texas. They've got like French Bulldogs, and they've got some of the baddest bloodlines that you've ever seen. I mean, some of the smallest micro exotics that'll literally fit in your pocket but it looks like it's a big ass fucking bulldog it's just they're amazing so go on my facebook check them out check out some of the photos of their dogs get at them i mean a lot of great people on board if i missed you i'm sorry you know, i do love you i do love you guys and i appreciate all the support everybody's given me um elevation boxing has been super hospital hospitable to me while I've been here getting me prepared for this, so you'll see them walking yeah, out dude, with he's, me. He's gotten some some groundwork in Albuquerque. Shout out to Albuquerque, man, for the hospitality. Oh man, Albuquerque has been behind me so great for this. And uh I couldn't be more welcome, man. It's 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 been a new inspiring trip more than just fighting. Like it's I feel it's changed me in a way in more than one way. And I can't wait to show everybody Friday. Fuck what yeah, I, man. I, lo- I like I like a man of good attitude, man. Uh, it's gonna be good. Oh, dude. It's, it's gonna be a great make sure everybody watches it because uh it's a banger. It's going to be great. It's going to be one of the, it's going to be what everybody wishes for in a bare knuckle fight. So I've got, Oh, Blau pre-workout. They, uh, they've also supplied me with pre-workout that helps me get through some of my intense workouts when it's uh, a little rough. What about your personal gym at home? Do you want to shout them out? Yes. That's uh that's such a good boxing club with my cousin. She's a, uh, she's over there by the tree. All right. All right. So that, is, uh, that is my main gym and my main coach right there. She literally handles everything in my life to make sure I'm fully focused and taken care of for what we need to do. There we go. All right, well, man, I can tell you I'm looking forward to seeing you bang it out in Knuckle Mania 3. Can't wait to meet you in Albuquerque here coming up this uh, following week. And yeah, absolutely. Levi, why don't, you lead us in, why don't you lead us in our sponsors real quick? And our sponsors, 20 Past 4, your one-stop vape and head shop. Four locations, two in Great Falls, one in Helena, one in Billings. Stop in and check them out. They got new stuff weekly. Fuck yeah. And oh, Gorilla Warfare Apparel. The best gear in the fight world. What is it? You guys are from Montana? Yeah. yeah. One last message. Yeah, that's it. Fuck you, Coster. You a bitch. Woo! There we go. Woo! That's it. That's all I got. I love you. <laughs> um, Ty's our dog. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Ty's our homie, bro. That's our boy, dog. <laughs> I still love you guys, but he's a bitch. <laughs> we'll we'll pass the word it, then, that you want the oh, smoker yeah. guy. Yeah. All he does is run his mouth, but every time I've called him out, he's uh. Y'all see him? 
He's y'all's boy. Y'all see him? Because I ain't seen him yet. We're real personable with Kai, so we'll pass the word to him, man. Yes, the real warfare apparel. Best cure in the fight world. <laughs> Stop in. Get it. TWB10 and check out. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, don't forget the lovely Jamie St. Marks. And uh, if you guys have any trash removal that you might need in the Great Falls, Montana area, make sure you hit up our boy Kyle Hudson with Hudson's trash removal. He'd be glad to clean up your trash. That's one yeah. Good yeah, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> That was nice. <laughs> no, for real. We'll pass the word on to our boy. We'll pass the word on to James that you want the smoke. You want some fights. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you bang out at Knuckle Mania 3. We can't wait to meet you. Yeah, good luck. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Excellent. Bye, y'all. Oh. Peace. That was awesome.